Hi all, welcome to AETCM, the Emergency Medicine channel. Hope all are doing good. So in this procedural series, first uh, today we'll get some uh, basic idea regarding the urethral catheterization. So before uh, getting into the urethral catheterization, so I want to give us some flashback idea regarding that uh, uh, or Foley's catheterization. First, what is mean by urethral catheterization? So it is nothing but we are going to place uh, some thin tube that is made by some rubber or silicon tube that we are going to place into the urinary bladder via the urethra. So that is called the some simple uh, definition of uh, the urethral catheterization. Then next question, uh, why we have to learn this procedure or in a simple term you can tell uh, what is the indication for the urethral catheterization. So you can tell, so in a one word if I want to tell means that is to reduce the stress of the urinary bladder in a more simple way to drain out the urine from the bladder, this is the indication. In this you can subcategorize in a large category, first one some medical condition like a urethral uh, stitches or uh, urethral stitches mainly we won't but under the uh, scope we will do but some medical condition like a urinary retention, urinary incontinence, some obstruction cases also we will do and then in second category those who can't mobile, those who can't mobilize in that cases we will do some of the example like those who have a spinal injury or some uh, the people will have uh, some um, fractures, long bone fractures and then some of them uh, will take them into the some sort of uh, longer procedures, surgery like things. So that case also we can put. And then uh, in some other cases we have to do the strict input output chart. So in that cases also we will uh, keep the person in the urethral catheterization. And then second part where we should not do the urethral catheterization or Foley's catheterization. So contraindication wise absolutely we should not uh, uh, in the case of uh, like uh, any uh, visible bleeding in the urethral meatus first thing. Second thing if you are suspecting any pelvic injury means there also we should not uh, do the urethral catheterization there uh, we are not directly uh, we should not means in that sense that might need a, under the scopy guidance we can do. And then some uh, relative contraindications like any urethral stitches is there means there we have to uh, better to go with an scopy guidance. So these are the some the person they might uh, went for the recent uh, urinary tract surgery also we can uh, think about the under scopy guidance. So in procedural part we are going to divide into three portions that is pre-procedural preparation and then procedural part post-procedure consideration. So what I want to do in the pre-procedural part. So here I have my aid uh, and then we have to start getting into the pre-procedural part. First standing right side of the person, you have to greet the person and then you have to verify the uh, persons with the identification mark or identification number. Second thing I have to ask my aid to arrange all equipments on my hand side. So third thing I have to do the local examination. So before that I have to verify the patient privacy and then before that I have to take the informed consent that is the sequence following like a RPM means I have to explain the procedure first. Second thing what are the risk that is associated with the procedure and then what are the benefits by that the person will get and then finally I have to explain the what are the other uh, test if you are doing urethral catheterization means so apart from what are the alternatives is there there is also you have to explain that is why first one you have to explain the purpose of this procedure what are the risk associated and then what are the benefits what are the alternative technique and then getting that the next one you have to do the local examination many of the people they won't do just straight away they will jump into the procedure so after getting and consent take the privacy and then with the permission of the person you just expose the genitalia area there you have to do the local examination as like so what are the local examination you have to check that uh, area that perineal area if any infection is there or not second one any blood stained in that uh, urethral meatus that we have to check and then most important thing you have to check the circumference of the urethral hole that is also one of the important thing because based on that if you are doing continuously four or five procedure uh, catheterization means there you can identify which 
size of catheter that urethral hole will accommodate so based on that so first you have to check before getting into the procedure you have to do the local examination in the first part you have to do the any local infection is there or not and then second any blood is there or not in the urethral meatus third part you have to check the urethral circumferences so we'll see the equipment checklist first so what are the equipments needed first one here i have a povidone iodine this is the antiseptic solution and then i have a foley's catheter this is a major hero of this procedure here i have a foley's catheter so and then this is the we have a various types of catheter if the person is based on the purpose the thing will vary so first we have some gondom catheter things and then we have that indwelling catheter so indwelling catheter under the indwelling catheter only we have this foley's catheter and then again we have some intermittent catheter so here you can see the some two lumens right in a, uh, intermittent catheter it will be like a, a suction catheter appearance that will be a only one single uh, catheter so we will insert and then we will drain out the urine and then we will remove that won't have a uh, that in uh, intermittent catheter doesn't have any balloon or something okay and then one more catheter is there that is called the irrigation catheter so likewise you will get a three port will be there one for your uh, balloon inflation one for your ur uh, urine bag uh, drainage connection one for for so one purpose for the irrigation purpose okay that uh, various types of catheter also there so based on the purpose that uh, we have to choose the various like uh, catheters and then here we have a gauze bag and then here i have a uh, syringe like a 20 cc you have to take to inflate the balloon so you should take a 20 ml or 15 to 20 ml ideally we have to inflate the balloon of the foley's catheter and then here i have a lignocaine jelly so it have it will act like a lubricant mean the same time as a local anesthetic and then here i have a like a hand sanitizer and then i have a gloves and then you have to take a sterile glove based on your size and then you have to take the uh, catheterization tray so this catheterization tray we have article of sponge holder and then we have a curved artery forceps and then small bowel that will to pour out our uh, povidone iodine ointment and then we have uh, some cotton also so these are the various equipment checklist we should have so we will start the procedural part first as like you have to follow the all standard precaution you have to start up with your decontamination of your and you have to do the hand washing and then you have to pick up that uh, appropriate sterile gloves you have to pick up then you have to come into the person so already we arranged all thing on our hand side all equipments whatever needed and then you have to prepare the person by placing some uh, wrap absorbent under the person and then you have to uh, oh, expose the person from the novel or below the novel to the until your half of the thigh you have to expose always you have to verify the privacy of the person that is the most important concern part in the female cases then what we can do means here the position of the person wise you have to give the frog leg position so you have to uh, give a frog leg position so based on that you have to cover and then you have to get into the procedure so here we have a you have to ask your aid to open the first layer of your cath uh, catheterization tray so if you have a, so you have to wear that sterile your uh, gloves and then you have to get the access so here I am opening, so as like uh, I told you earlier, we have one more thing, central hole towel, we have a, here I have a, some two bowels and then I have a sponge holder, I have a, and then one artery forceps, curved artery forceps. So whatever the needed thing, you can place it in the sterile area, thereby easily you can access and then you can continue the procedure. So you can keep the lignocaine uh, gel here, so that uh, what that is a uh, act as here. So I am taking the lignocaine gel and then you can ask about your syringe. So by that syringe, taking the syringe, you can load it up the lignocaine uh, in that syringe. So thereby you can inject and then you can continue the procedure. So into the procedure, again I uh, again I do the decontamination part, I did the hand wash and then already I asked the in informed concern I took and then with the permission of the person I exposed the area and then now I am getting into the procedure for that. So in a female genitalia, most important thing, first you have to identify the urethral opening and then thereby you have to continue the procedure. First I am getting into the person, so with the one hand you have to just open that labia majora and then minora here you can see the that upper one is a urethral opening and then lower one is a vaginal opening 
okay so here i have to start up with the first i have to start up with the cleaning procedure so that way i have to take the gauze and then i have to dip into the povidone iodine antiseptic solution thereby i have to clean the labia minora then then take it out the other gauze and then again i am cleaning the one more wipe and then i have to discard and then take it out the other gauze i have to dip into the povidone iodine and then i have to clean the labia majora thereby you have to clean the inner to outer first you have to clean the labia minora and then majora part so thereby you have to clean it some of the people they will uh, paint the whole thai also they will half of the thai also they will do uh, if it is if you want means if you are going more sterile or if you are taking the person into the some uh, urethra related procedure means uh, you can go upon the that painting also you can go so thereby after that we clean that area and then you have to uh, remove your gloves or if you want to perform in a one hand means this is that you, my left hand is an unsterile person my right hand is a sterile part so i can access with the one hand or else you can uh, uh, you are uh, toning of your uh, gloves and then you can pick up a new uh, gloves and then thereby you can continue the procedure here so next part i am wearing that new gloves sir by here i have a lignocaine gel before that i have to wrap this sterile central hole towel and then i have to inject that lignocaine gel this thing i preloaded in a 10 ml syringe some of the people they will apply just over the catheter itself in that thing what the disadvantage means there you won't get any local anesthetic action if you are injecting initially and then if you are waiting for the 2 or 3 minutes means both action like a lubricant action mean the same time you will get a local anesthetic action also so here again i am finding out the urethral opening and then there i am injecting the lignocaine gel okay so we have to wait for the local anesthetic action for the 2 or 3 minutes so mean same time you can pick up your catheter and then you can check the integrity of the catheter like you have to if you have uh, things so you have to think like uh, you have to load that balloon and then you have to verify that whether the integrity of the catheter is good or not so we have to inflate the balloon you have to deflate the balloon that you have to do so after 2 2 3 minutes so if you have a central hole towel means you can take it out that full catheter and then you can insert if you don't have a central hole towel means you can uh, do like a, so part by partly you can withdraw so while insertion you can part by partly withdraw that outer wrapping cover okay so again spread that so we are seeing that urethral hole in the upper uh, upper opening is a urethral hole so there i am inserting so you can ask the person to take a deep breath slowly you have to insert so slowly you have to insert insert and then until the your bifurcation of your catheter you have to insert mean the time you can ask your aid to place that your uh, thing like a euro bag or euro meter under the lower uh, level of the thigh you can ask the person you can ask your aid to place so after that you have to connect this euro bag or euro meter confirm so you inserted until the bifurcation area so i connected with an euro bag or euro meter then i have to inject the 15 to 20 ml of so i attached with the euro meter and then i am going to inject a 15 to 20 ml of sterile water okay this is by we are anchoring the tube into the urinary bladder after injecting you have to partly withdraw the catheter slowly you have to retract uh, withdraw the catheter there one at one point you will feel some resistance there you have to anchor your tube so that is the area where is the lower trigonal area after that you have to fix it over the thigh your catheter you have to fix and then one more thing you have to place your euro bag or euro meter below the thigh level again it should not touch the your ground uh, floor it should not touch it should be above the floor mean the same time below the thigh level so this is why we are ending up the procedure so we will summarize the procedure first we started with that all the equipments we arranged in our hand side including your preloaded uh, means uh, we take up the lignocaine and then we loaded preloaded with it in a 10 cc syringe and then we took the catheters everything and then we get into the person already we exposed the person and then with the concern uh, with the permission of the person we first started with the procedure first we sterilized the area the inner to outer area we cleaned and then we injected the or uh, Uh, lignocaine gel here the one of the most important thing you have to correctly identify that 
opening which is the urethral opening and then which is the vaginal opening so upper one is the urethral opening there we inject the lignocaine gel and then we get into the procedure we inserted the foley's catheter based on that correct size we inserted and then after that once if you reach out the bifurcation area and then we will connect that uro back and then again we inject inflated the balloon with the 15 to 20 ml of your sterile water there and after that in the post procedure part we fixed the catheter in the thigh and then mean the same time we placed our euro bag or euro meter below the thigh level above from the floor so this is the post procedure part and then after that you have to remove all the equipments and then you have to uh, recover the person we have to thank the person and then you have to thank your assist and then finally what are the complications that can arise means so if you are not properly maintaining the aseptic precaution from the starting of the procedure to ending of the procedure means so you will encounter that urinary tract infection so all of them we know urinary tract infection is a most common hospital acquired infection that we have to prevent so you have to follow the strict aseptic precaution from the starting to the until the end and then second thing catheter obstruction so we have to properly we have to frequently we have to flush the catheter if you are seeing any cloudy urine something means so you have to properly flush, uh, flush the catheter or you have to uh, in between if needed you have to change the foley's catheter also and then third third most common complication in a female is a misplacement of the catheter so majority of them they will insert into the vaginal opening so that is the that can land up in the some other complication so before getting into the procedure first identify the urethral hole and then place it that uh, your um, foley's catheter thereby we can easily take over that misplacement of the catheter so these are the three most common complications that can arise in that female catheterization part so do your best shalom